At Bifurcation Insurance Company, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing into. We cover every kind of bifurcation, from falling shattered window panes to rogue tot cables. We take care of it so you don't have to. Don't wait. Call Bifurcation Insurance Company today at 122-122-8421. Mention HMT to get your first month's bill half off. Hello and welcome to Horror Movie Talk. An opinionated and accidentally funny horror movie review show. Go, 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 go. New theatrical releases always get priority. But we also review older horror movies, both good and horrible. Wow, that didn't sound good. Welcome, everybody, to Horror Movie Talk. I'm Captain Bryce Hansen of the USS Horror Talk, and... And I'm uh, First Mate David Day, uh, who is the foremost <laughs> foremost expert in scare no-nos. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, check out our website at horrormovietalk.com. You'll find links to social media and other stuff like blogs and our shop. You know, there might be things of interest like stickers. Uh, we post new episodes every Wednesday. Please subscribe and most importantly, right now to me. If you want to be my friend, leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts because we need 35 ratings by September and uh, to reach our goal, which is 200 ratings by September for reasons. So if you if you want to do a good deed today, leave a rating for Horror Movie Talk on Apple Podcasts. The other thing I'd really like to do is pump those social media numbers up, particularly Instagram and Facebook. If you could like us on there, that would help me out quite a bit and talk to me i will talk to you at length about all kinds of dumb shit so uh yeah reach on out and we'll talk yeah i know we uh it's kind of early especially if you're a new listener to to beg but uh hopefully we'll give you a reason to by the end of the show we have a great show today we're gonna be talking about ghost boat (laughs) wait we'll we'll start that's not that's not the actual title of it ghost boat is Is that all right no i don't think so i think it's ghost ship oh that's right ghost ship we're gonna Talking about ghost ship. We'll start out by giving a brief review and our score for the movie. We score on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being a miserable dredge where it makes you angry, 5 being a perfectly average film that hits all the expected marks, and 10 being so good it transcends genre boundaries. After we give our score, we'll get into spoilers, take a deeper dive into what we liked and hated about the film, and then later on, we'll be doing a couple bits, doing taglines. Oh, shit! I forgot all about taglines. (laughs) Of course, taglines. Um, Did I text you about taglines? Yeah, you did. Okay. Um, And it came from social media, which is catching up on about a month worth of messages, so we're not going to get to everyone, but we'll try our best. Um, So yeah, this one um, was voted on by our patrons. This was actually July's patron selection so we're we're a little late we've been we've take we've had about a month off for vacation and running we don't pre-recorded know, episodes we don't know you or anyone else an apology <laughs> <laughs> but anyways we're we're releasing july's patron pick now in august and uh they picked ghost ship yeah so they did this to you they did this to us they did this to everybody they did this to you they did this to themselves and ghost ship is from the early 2000s Yes, that's all you need. That's the so only you're... sentence that is, needs to come out of anyone's mouth regarding this movie. <laughs> and here is the trailer. Mr. Murphy, I'm Jack Diamond. I fly the Arctic Weather Patrol. Last month, I was out in the middle of the strait when I came across this. Congratulations, you found a boat in the middle of the ocean. What do you think a ship like this could be worth? Depends on if we have the right to salvage it. I do know one thing. Sea gives you an opportunity to take it. Yo, Murph, I think you should get up here. It's an ocean liner. It's the Antonio Grasa. Any sign of what might have happened? Nothing. No passengers. No crew. No captain. No mention of anything in the ship's log. What do you make of that? A cruise ship. I 
saw something I couldn't possibly have seen. I think I saw a little girl. Seriously wrong with this boat. Haunted, possessed, whatever you want to call it. I say we get our boat going and get the hell out of here. What are we gonna do? We have got to get off this boat now. Bon voyage. Ghost Boaty McBoatface is available to rent on multiple streaming platforms. Ghost Ship is about a ghost ship filled with ship ghosts that is discovered by a salvage crew that eventually become ship ghosts on the ghost ship. <laughs> the salvage crew aboard the tugboat HMS Who Gives a Fuck are given a lead on a, an abandoned ship in the Bering Strait. The information is brought to them by Jack Ferryman, a Canadian Air Force pilot who insists on coming along with them on their salvage operation because he looks too handsome to be in just one scene. The crew sails out to the ship and discovers it's missing. It's a missing 1960s Italian ocean liner called the Antonio Grazza. 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 <laughs> Which uh, was that racist? Yes. Which suffered a tragic boating accident <laughs> that uh, bifurcated most of its passengers. Do you know what that means? Bifurcated means to split in two. To split in twain. Uh, as they lazily wander around the corridors talking about working, they find out that the ship has more ghosts than they bargained for. All right, it's better when you do it. Oh, you turned you turned off my sound levels on my uh, on my computer. Oh yeah. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, ghost ship is described by Roger Ebert as it's better than you expect, but not as good as you hope. Wow, that's very <laughs> accurate. It's spot on. Um, Better than you expect, but not as good as you hope. Yeah, this uh. it's still pretty generous. <laughs> that should be the fucking title. Yeah, that should be the tagline. Um, it's still pretty generous in my eyes, considering the expectations going in are scraping the bottom of the barrel. Like there's no expectations for a film called Ghost Ship with a skull on the front of the boat it's in the poster. Al it's almost like this. This title reminds me so much of Deathbed, the bed that eats people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a title of a movie. That's the full title. Deathbed. Deathbed. Uh, two two words. Colon. Deathbed. Colon. The bed that eats people. That's the title of the whole movie. It, ghost ship. The ship that ghosts people. Yeah. The sh the people. The yeah. You're right. The movie starts out with one of the best schlocky, gory sequences in all of horror. Really? Yeah. If you watched just the opening scene and walked away, you would not be missing that much. Not only would you not be missing much, you'd be shocked, disturbed. Uh, I, I did not. I do not like that opening scene because it is so <laughs> gross. It's right. really legitimately ick. Yeah. Um, and impressive. And impressive. Yeah. It's it's a it's a it's an interesting concept that clearly was the idea behind the entire movie right it was like how do we fit this scene into a movie and then they built a movie around it right oh. the rest <laughs> of the film we're just gonna ignore that what <laughs> that burp <laughs> the rest of the film is a pretty standard slow burn haunted ho haunted house story set on a boat mm. as uh, reading roger ebert's review of this it's like he was almost just tickled that it was a haunted house on a boat it's like it's a great idea. You change the setting. You put it on a boat. You take the haunted house, you make it a boat. It's, a, it's groundbreaking. A haunted houseboat. <laughs> um, the problem with that setup is that it requires the supposed professional salvage workers 
to do to do exactly zero work for an hour and four minutes of the 91 minute runtime <laughs> there is a little bit of i'm so nitpicky on these films apparently yeah, like, really. why why do i expect things to make sense or people to do the thing that you would it's expect a weird them thing to, do? to get it's to me it's a weird thing to get hung up on in movies right you know it's like especially movies that are about supernatural or sci-fi or horror stuff right it's because it's like like if you want people to just wander around and explore an abandoned ship why not just like have like a random sailboat come across it but no that's specifically salvage workers like industrial like like manual labor people mm. that are there specifically to salvage a boat do they give a fuck about the crazy corridors of this thing or are they just concerned about patching it up and towing it it's yeah it's a good it's a good point you, you have you have a you have a point it just doesn't matter i mean if it's you just, if you it's actually just it had, wouldn't bother a normal person as much as it bothers you it's strange that you get so hung up on it yeah if you if you had like a crew of like manual labor seamen <laughs> that you just put on a boat i swear to god seamen i swear to god you could have like a ghost show up in front of them with like a decapitated head in their arms and they'd just be like huh all right so anyways this cable needs to go here <laughs> i don't know anyways yeah. um there is a little bit of mystery unraveling there's a little bit of mystery unraveling going on during that first hour but most of the action happens in the last 20 minutes it's not a good movie um but it has a good cast and it is salvaged uh -oh. by the bookends oh, of its no. ridiculous beginning and end. Like, it's pretty delightfully schlocky for the beginning and end, and then the middle part is like, meh. So, me. let me... My review will go a little something like this. I... Um, next week, we are reviewing Event Horizon. Um, it just so happens that we're recording both this Ghost Ship episode and Event Horizon in the same day. So, I watched both of these movies. Um, Event Horizon first, and then this one the day after. And I was shocked at how... They are the exact same film, almost very similar, almost very similar down to the characters. Yeah. So you got so there's slight differences, but the basic like bones of it are the same. You've oh, got a, yes. You've got a crew of a small boat that needs to go to a big abandoned boat or ship ship sorry. and find it and figure and, out what happened. Yeah. Either either figure out what happened and bring it back or figure out. You know how to salvage it. Yeah, and uh, and then various spooky ghost things happen throughout. Yeah, and then big reveals at the end. More I, so on ghost ship. Then I Event watched Horizon. Event Horizon first, and I I was oh, a little little peek into next week. I'm not super big fan of it, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I, this movie actually pulled off the things that Event Horizon tried right. to pull off in a better way and yeah, so and that stuff makes sense kind of yeah stuff there's actually decent amount of sense making like you said the acting is pretty solid the whole way through the actors are i don't i don't dislike any of them and uh and the most importantly the chronology the timeline the reasons the I don't know. It just all felt uh, more grounded in reality because it was. Instead yeah. of being in the far-flung future, it was in the past, right? The roots of this story are about the tragedy that happened before and all the ghosts that are around now because of it. And so this movie um, delighted me probably more than it should have yeah, if because you were... I had to compare it to Event Horizon. Yeah. Now. If you were to set like the two posters, set the two trailers up next to someone that's never seen either one of them, and you were to say, predict which one's better, 99 times out of 100, people are going to say, well, obviously Event Horizon. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, what do you call that thing that you remember? Nostalgia surrounding right. Uh, Event Horizon. Right. That Ghost Ship doesn't, doesn't get. Uh, Event Horizon gets a lot of nostalgia love, um, but I think if you were to go back and take a look at the movie, you might you might change your mind but yeah. anyway that's a different that's a different story my point is ghost ship is not bad 
in my opinion. Mm. I think it's pretty darn average. Um, it uh, it definitely didn't bother me, um, and um, and so I uh, I think I I had better time with it than you did. Um, granted, I was not paying real close attention because I already had seen this movie. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't think it's a good movie or even necessarily an average movie. I think I'm probably a little bothered more than I would normally be just because. I was a little, I was bored for like the first, like, like, uh, from minute, probably 15 to minute, you know, you are definitely the Siskel, Siskel to my Ebert. Always, almost always. Uh, I very, very much identify with what Ebert said there. Yeah. This movie is a lot better than you think it should be, but not as good as you want, as you want it to be. Uh, and that is. That's what I feel the whole way through this movie. Right. Like, God damn, this is a lot better than I thought it would be. All right. Uh, um, so my score I give to it isn't super generous. I gave it a three. Wow. That is. And cool. I was really like on edge between a two, like a, a high two and a three and like decided on three. Um, it's not good. It's not the worst, and Event Horizon is worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before I give my score, I just want to I want to pony a uh, you know this is this is high quality real estate in terms of podcast time. So, I'd like to introduce uh, a new a new thing, a new feature of horror movie talk. Oh, which I thought is, we were going to do that in the mid roll. Yeah, but this is a little bit more high quality time right here. So <laughs> okay. I'd just like to say if you guys want, and we'll hit in the mid roll too, if you guys want to give us a call at Horror Movie Talk and leave us a voicemail message, you can now do that by calling 971 772 And just leave us a message. Let us know if you have questions, want our opinion, need us to settle an argument or a fight for you. If you want to you know, tell us how great we are or how terrible we are, we we welcome all that. So that's 971-772-0743. Now with that, my score I'm excited to get those those voicemails mm-hmm. by the way. So with that our sc- my score for Ghost Boat, the boat that eats people is 5 out of 10. Yeah, this is this is a very average movie and mm-hmm. especially considering the time that it came out. This is right around when Wrong Turn came out. Uh, 2002, 2003, and Wrong Turn is so much worse than this, um, and this didn't bother me at all. Uh, I really had a okay time watching it, mm-hmm. and it's uh, it's it's uh, it doesn't it didn't well, disappoint me. Funny that you mention Wrong Turn because mm. it shares a cast member. <laughs> yes, it does. It shares Desmond Tutu. Des. Am I missing a pinch? Is he uh is he the the guy the guy who tips them off to the boat? Oh mm-hmm. hey ho Desmond Harrington. Oh yeah. hey ho. Desmond Harrington is ferryman. Um the guy that found the boat and it tips tips him off. Oh hey ho, I call it uh squirrel. Well they said you were hungry, Kylie. I don't think it's a squirrel. It's a name. <clears throat> really, how do you know? Probably ran over it. <laughs> school they make you work on animal cadavers before you get to the real thing it's a mink he's an expert at minks and he's an expert at finding boats it's a mink oh hey ho i call it uh... go ship um (laughs) so yeah um what what yeah you give it perfectly middle of the road that's i i could see how people could see that I, i was just what brings it down for me is the middle it just, I have, it's not just not maintain my interest, and maybe it's just I I, I mean there I'm was jaded towards those techniques. Of, th- there was an actual storyline, a coherent storyline that that was like things played out played out on this boat that uh, on on you know once the accident happened uh, and then you know p- different people tried to g- gain control of the boat and and there were all these little clues and and uh, breadcrumbs throughout the movie to um, to kind of like 
Hey, what are all those bullet holes about? What's what's that yeah. about? And and that was enough to like that's more than most of these movies give mm, you. Yeah, that's true. That's more than most of them give you. And that's so true. I, I appreciate the effort and the fact that it wasn't a steaming pile of shit really stands out to me. It was like <laughs> it was like I really fully expected this movie to be far King terrible because our patrons like to watch us suffer and usually give us garbage fucking movies to watch. I don't know if it's because they think they're good and they want our opinion on it or if they just like to see us squirm. I have no insight into that. But if if you're a uh, sadomasochist and want to see us squirm, consider becoming a patron. And, you know, we got other perks that are like, you know, yeah. um, Lit, lit, a whole nother podcast that we record after the show yeah called the after pod we yeah there's lots of perks you should check it out go to patron patreon.com slash horror movie talk and just briefly want to since it's been a while um since we've recorded within the week yeah of the actual release we have some uh uh you know some block drain uh worth of a is ready morning ready worth of appreciation we've had several new patrons join us since the last time we actually recorded something. yeah it's been a long time sorry for not getting your name out here sooner but we were on vacation for about a month yeah and we were playing pre-recorded episodes so first let's frank let's frank <laughs> <laughs> let's thank frank e v yeah frankie v i, I like to say and uh, ellis bradley b cody b lots of uh Lots of bees. Lots of bees. Bitches. Uh, Matthew S., Brian W., and just yesterday, I guess, was yeah. Cassandra B. Yeah. So, um, and Cody B. I work with. Oh, no which, shit. Which is fun. Hey, Cody. Bryce Bryce is a great employee and model worker, and I love him to death. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, check out Patreon. Thanks for, for our patrons for supporting the show. It really helps out. It helps us make the show better and and bring more thank you guys so much for supporting the show it helps us a lot and it helps us bring you cool new stuff like shirts and stickers and stuff yeah um check out local as fuck apparel.com it's a apparel company that's a, just about as local as you can get they're based in our hometown of vancouver washington and they're going to be handling the production of our t-shirt line t-shirt lines uh they have a ton of really good looking apparel uh with the message of local as fuck on it hat shirts hoodies and even dirt bike apparel so use hmt discount uh use hmt code to get a 10 percent discount off the whole order and uh, check them out um Shutter.com is a horror streaming service you should check out. Use code HMT to get a 30-day free trial for them. Um, you can also support the podcast by buying or renting any movie or really anything on Amazon if you click through the green button in the header of our website, horrormovietalk.com. Also, make sure to check out our resident artist, Dustin Goble, who is a professional artist who fucks so hard with that big old teflon dick of his um he also takes commissions for artwork from hmt fans so make sure to contact him at dgobel00 that's at d-g-o-e-b-e-l-0-0 on instagram and make your artistic dreams come true tell him that hmt sent you i'm excited to see what he comes up with for ghost boat the boat mm -hmm. that eats people um just a quick plug for um, someone that supported our show, so just wanted to give a shout out to them. Vi Violet Moth. Yes. Yeah. So they, they, Dale of the Dead or Violet Moth. She makes like really kind of horror themed, kind of cute gothic, stickers like, and gothic. Like cute goth um, themed. Yeah. Like stickers and apparel or uh, stickers and uh, and like hair stuff for, for girls. Yeah. Check her out at uh, Facebook dot com slash violet moth shop or violet moth dot big cartel dot com is her shop she's helped me out a lot in terms of man um i had so many questions for her because i was like um she was a patron for a while and uh and i was like uh, i was like D she and she's like hey i have a shop too if you want to check it out i checked it out and i bought some some little um hair clips for my girls from there and uh and she ships to the US she's from the UK and uh and she I started asking her I was like how like we're new to this whole shop thing like how do you how do we 
how are you got she got so big in in a span of the same amount of time we did she has a lot more followers than us on social media i was like how do you do this she help me you know help me figure out what we need to do and brainstorm some ideas stuff that we've i mean most of it we've thought about before but we were not really haven't really committed to doing it but yeah, seeing it's kicking us in the pants seeing the success of other people is, is really good. really helpful and yeah just big thanks to her and halloween is coming soon and her stickers and uh and greeting cards and all that kind of stuff are super fucking cute halloween themed stuff so make sure to check her out on um let's see violet here. moth dot big dot com or yeah. facebook dot com slash violet moth shop yeah so for real out. thank you so much dale of the dead yeah well. so everyone else thank you for listening let's get into spoilers and talk more about ghost boat ghost ship <laughs> Ghost boat. Uh, uh, spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> ghost ship. Yeah. It's so much funner saying ghost boat. Yeah. <laughs> so, the opening scene, we've talked a little bit about it. Um, it sets it up. It's got real romantic schmaltzy music yeah. going on. Dude, okay, first of all, what the fuck is up with that WB logo? That threw me off so much. I was like, we rented the wrong fucking movie. Oh, I didn't even notice. What, what happened? Like, the... Uh, I was so irritated at first. I was like, I rented a different ghost ship? God damn it! And I even texted you. I was like, this is a 2002 one, right? Because the WB logo is, like, straight out of 1960. Oh, right. And it did the same thing that the brain that wouldn't die did to me, which is threw me for a loop at the very start and made me question whether I was watching the right thing. And I hate that shit. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. So it starts with this, like, real romantic music, and it pans around, and you see this, um, this cruise liner populated by a bunch of people on the deck having a dance party like a a ball um and everyone seems like they're on the deck dancing to you know the waltz or whatever there's some random haughty italian singer singing and everything's going great i like to potty all the time potty all the time potty all the time that's what i sing to my uh my girls to get them to potty train mm-hmm. um so then an unseen like a hand from an unseen person kind of flicks a switch and lots of cables start you know unwinding or winding and lots of tension on those lots cables. of hot cables and all of a sudden this is steel braided like a very thin steel braided cable think of think of like a, a eighth of an inch steel braided cable line very thin yeah and it it snaps and it goes and it whips through and it whips through and like everyone like is kind of shocked yeah, everyone's like, like what, what? And there's kind of like a mist of blood. Yeah. And everyone's kind of like standing still, kind kind of like like with a shocked look on their face. Did we get cut in half just now? And then all slowly people start. (laughs) Yep. We did. (laughs) Yep. Uh, Yeah. So they start sliding off of themselves and falling in half onto the floor and uh, people's heads. It doesn't seem like this uh, this wire really had a distinct trajectory. It seemed like it cut people in half different parts of their body, but I don't know. It's hard hard to tell. That's look. There's a. I mean, there's a very so like when thing. Okay, so I can't, yeah, it's wavy. I get it. Yeah, yeah there's lots of different. There will whip through lots of variations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you see it kind of through the eyes of this little girl that is basically the last man standing. Um, on, that is sexist. On the deck of the ship. Last person standing. Last. Last folk standing. Yeah. Last it standing. Um, with everyone around just like cut in half and guts hanging out and they're just 
trying to kind of crawl for a couple seconds before they completely expire. It's, it's um, really disturbing. The it's, sound design, like the visuals is like really effective. I could have gone my whole life without seeing the, how, because it's so sad because this little girl is just, I mean, imagine being affected by that. Imagine watching that shit happen as a little kid and just being like, oh no. And then, oh, it's so gross. I mean, it really left a bad taste in my mouth. I've seen it once before and I was like, ew. It's such yeah. a nasty, nasty implication for that little girl. It's yeah. like, I have a little girl and I don't want her to see horrible, horrible shit like that. <laughs> right. Ew. Yeah. Like, it's uh, definitely a standout scene. Um, and I don't think. <laughs> I like to say that I'm too many arms. I don't think the rest of the scene, uh, the rest of the movie ever lives up anywhere close to that scene. Like no. not even in the same that's universe. A, that's a very fair assessment, and that's that's also probably kind of the reason why I give it such a low score because it it's, just sets expectations so high with that first scene in terms of what you're gonna see. It's out of place. If yeah. they had put that scene at the end and had a mystery as to why all these people were dead on this goat bo- ghost boat, and then had that be the crescendo, it would have been. A much better movie, because then you've been like, wow, and what a finish. Yeah, it's like if you started your porn, like, right after the credits with a big old sloppy load, like, being How did we get to this big load? It's like, all right, well. The journey is the destination. Not the, you know, the... (laughs) <laughs> the uh the fuck is the is the load so it'd be it'd be like a, a porn starting out with like a big old load being sprayed on a poor young woman and then like about an hour of refractory period as we wait for the guy to to be able to get hard again oh wait no that's the wrong clip and then you get to you could to watch some actual porn that's what this Thank movie feels you, like daddy. yeah you wanna, <laughs> hang on i think we have some real um some real horror movie stuff. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Put your fingers oh. in there too. Jesus. Put your fingers in this dick in there. <laughs> Should have played that for uh, Event Horizon in oh, yeah? like the the hellscape scene. Um, so yeah, it, it starts out strong. Um, just a side note: Have you ever been on a cruise ship before? No, I like, will never go on a cruise ship. Yeah, people have strong opinions about cruise ships. I've been on several, and they're not that bad. It just depends on the ship that you go on. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's just like your opinion, man. I I feel like you and me are different in that aspect. Like where, you know, you're for you, a vacation is one thing, and for me, it's a different thing. And sure. I don't want to, I won't be stuck on a fucking boat. Well, see, that's the thing. If you're going to go to the Caribbean and you want to visit a bunch of islands. I don't. I want to visit one island. Yeah. Well, I want to visit a bunch of... I don't want to spend two hours... I don't want to have an inferior experience on six different islands. I want to have a superior experience on one island. Well, I mean, it can be a superior experience depending on the boat you're on. But, uh, yeah. So, anyways, I I get it. But the one thing that I learned on a, a cruise with my wife is that... My wife? Is that Aaron is takes issue with me calling cruise ships boats. Oh, like they're not boats. It's like they're she was ships. in this. It's like she was a she's a navy vet. It's a completely different thing. It's not a boat. It's a ship. It's uh, not a well, boat. That's, I mean, she's she's accurate. It's just a weird stance for her to take not being a navy vet. I mean, is it an accurate aren't ships boats? I think this is one of those things. This is my rifle. This is what, my gun. What is this what is, is for, more? This is for shooting. This is for fun, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, what's the a boat is what, an overarching more... classification. Right. Yeah, right. so it, it is a boat, right? I mean, sure, it's a boat. Yeah, it's it's a boat, but uh, that's me. It's a boat, but uh, it's disrespectful to call a ship a boat. I don't care about the feelings of your sh- of your boat. You know how you know how t- uh, it would be like a kid calling a teacher their first name. It's like, "Hey, Earl." It's like, "No, it's it's Mr. Spaghetti Noodles." Or just a guy. Yeah, this guy told me today at school this. Right. Of teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just disrespectful it's like, it's to the true. ship. Yeah. It's just yeah. yeah, and it's a weird stance for her to take too, because she like she has no naval background. Yeah, I just want to say, if you care about calling ships boats, um, I don't care. I'm going to call it a boat. It's a ghost boat. So this is directed by Steve Beck, 
which previously to this movie did 13, sorry, thir, 13 in ghosts. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which I think he wrote and directed. This is very much of early 2000s editing style in full effect, yeah. like very MTV quick cuts to snap zooms. Yeah. Very like. Joel Schumacher Batman esque. Oh yeah, kind of editing, and uh, it's really outdated now. It's yeah. like artificial action or artificial excitement, and now you're just like, oh, who cares? Yeah, it's just it seems so forced now. Um, that's what the kind of the introduction of the salvage crew was. Um, same kind of thing as Event Horizon. Uh, like the uh, constructed chaos, yeah, for no reason. It's like there's, that doesn't really it's drive the story forward. Other than now, you need to be excited. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Mission Impossible did it a lot and did it better. Yeah, you know, and because well, yeah, uh, there was setup instead of just right. There was setup. It's exciting now. Yeah, and then and then directors looked at it from a slightly more informed like movie making perspective and went. Oh, that's effective. Yeah. And then they just did it without any setup to be lazy because they wanted excitement that wasn't earned. Right. So I already mentioned that Desmond Harrington from Wrong Turn is in this. Um, I think he was probably miscast. I think they should have had more of like a Weasley character. He was pretty fucking Weasley. Yeah, he's kind of Weasley. But you look at him and it feels like in any other movie he'd be like, well, like in There Will Be Blood has a guy that tips him off and then you just never see him again yeah you know yeah and it feels like that type of character but desmond harrington is way too handsome mm. to make you think well we're never going to see that guy again you see him here you're immediately okay well i guess he's going to be a he's a character. staple here he comes yeah um <clears throat> the other thing that felt very early 2000s was the soundtrack the rock song in this movie was uh Performed by Mudvayne. You uh, know Mudvayne. I've seen them in concert at a at a Ozfest one year. Yeah, but while I was watching, I was like, "Is that what I think it is? Have we got corn? <laughs> Have we got corn?" Yeah, I could have sworn it was corn because very much like. <laughs> Have we got corn? Yeah, <laughs> I see where you're going. <laughs> That's so, uh, yeah, the, it's very much of its time. Um, also, in terms of editing, you can tell they're on a boat because the camera tilts back and forth. Yeah. It's very, it's very like uh, the next generation, like, battle um, damage situation where yeah. they just shake the camera. Yeah. Where it's like, this one, they're just kind of slowly rocking the camera side to side. Yeah, it's like... And it's very obvious they're in some corner they're in some office building yeah, it's like the film version of what homer does to marge to get her to fall asleep it's like <laughs> maybe you'd like some soothing ocean noises army <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so yeah does Des Desmond ambiance for ambiance's sake yeah so um Desmond's character, Desmond Harrington's character's name is ferryman so ferryman comes and says like he's in the the Canadian Air Force, and he flew over the ship, and he brings them a a photo of it, and they're like, hey, are you interested in checking out the ship because you're a salvage crew and you got a tugboat? And they're like, okay. And they agree to split the findings with him, but since they haggle with him, he, inf he insists that he's going to come with them. They go to the ghost ship, and like I said, for a work crew, there sure seems to be a lot of aimless wandering. On this ship. Doesn't doesn't seem to be really concerned about getting down to business. Business. Well, I mean, like, well, this may just highlight your lack of knowledge in what uh, in what salvagers do. You know, I mean, maybe they're trying to determine if there's anything worth salvaging. Have you ever thought of that? Yeah, but I mean, wouldn't first course of business, like, get it set up to be towed? Well, I mean, w like no. no matter what, they're going to bring it back. No, you got to right? no because you got to you got to do your research on your stock before you hook your hook your, you know, get 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 some of it. You know, we, otherwise you're just wasting a bunch of resources on something that could be worth nothing. Sure, I mean it's made of metal, right? Don't you recycle metal? 
I mean, you recycle metal, but they, you do that for free. You don't remember, can you sell metal from 60 years ago that's all rusted out and shitty? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe the only thing of worth is the gold inside, the booty inside. <laughs> arr, arr. Um, God, that was horrible. And as they explore the ship, they discover that pretty much every room is the exact same amount of decrepit. This is another thing that like made me... For for a ship that's still afloat mm. after forty years, just drifting around. Like, if the hull was preserved enough to be drifting, like, shouldn't the inside with like closed doors or at least like three layers of doorways? Shouldn't some of it be not moldy? No, no. Okay, I would. <laughs> No, okay. So the sea air just, like, permeated everything right to the core to where everything's, like, completely covered in mold and creepy. It's very much a spooky house syndrome. That yes. Everything is poorly poorly lit. Everything's decrepit. The floor can fall away at any moment. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, the floor falling away is... That's a hard, a little bit harder to swap. I mean, in terms, look, now we're getting down to this Bryce thing that you do, which is like everything has to make sense all the time. Yeah, it's just called thinking. No, <laughs> no, it's like the, the, where are you going to suspend your disbelief? I can't. I mean, I can't see. That's the film's fault for not suspending my disbelief. I can, for other movies, I wouldn't be bothered with this stuff, but this one um, didn't engage me enough, so. So you just ended up just just picking it apart. I can't tell like, you, like some sort of film critic. I can't tell you what I'm going to be bothered by. All I can tell you is that when I'm bothered by something, I notice it. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's true. Sometimes I'm bothered by stuff that other people aren't, and sometimes I'm not bothered by stuff that people are. It's just to the ex- it's just to such an extent. True, true, but, true. You know, we're sitting here spending an hour talking about ghost ships so what are you gonna do oh god damn it you got me there i'm looking at desmond uh what's it harrington harrington's uh yeah his main thing was he was on uh dexter for a while yeah okay so he was so he he was on this and then wrong turn those were his biggest like starring roles and then yeah he was on dexter and then rescue me which was that that show with uh that angry Irishman, Dennis, Dennis Leary, Leary, and uh, and then I'm I'm looking up his uh, IMDb a little bit, and it goes, Dark Knight Rises, and I was like, oh shit, he played uh, some some extra in in that. I think he was one of the police officers. Yeah, uniform, and yeah. Uh, and uh, and just since then, it's just been a bunch of shows. So he's just kind of been. I mean, he's he's like a workforce actor, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now he is. He he. There was a moment there where he could have teetered into you know being sure. kind of a bigger, yeah. bigger deal. But he's fine. He's serviceable. I don't. Ha- I don't have any complaints you about him. Service him, Bryce. Um, maybe that's my it's my business. Um, so as they're exploring, like each of them kind of sees spooky stuff. The main one is the ghost girl that we recognize from the opening scene as the girl that survived. She keeps visiting Epps, which is played by uh, Julianne Margulis. Yeah, from... Uh, Margulies. From from ER. And from, yeah, plenty of other stuff. Mostly it's ER. Very recognizable. Mostly ER. Mostly ER. Um, and she keeps seeing this ghost girl show up and... I mean, the, the amount of notes I took for the middle part of this is, like, so sparse. Yeah, it's like, well, like, it's just kind of the same kind of spooky stuff. Go ship me, go shipping. I had to I had to go back and put in the main plot points just to remember what we needed to bring up. The main thing is that they discover gold. Mm. In one of these uh, rooms, they find several crates full of, of just ingots of yeah, gold. Beautiful. Ingots upon ingots upon ingots. And, and, then, and a struggle appears to have taken place on the ghost boat. Yeah. And so this salvage operation turned into the most lucrative thing they've ever done in their lives. Yeah. And they casually... Uh, all right. This is another nitpicky thing. This is another thing that uh, I am very open to the ridicule I'm going to receive for some of the points I talk about. And this one is the most nitpicky. Um, the ease at which they lift those gold bars. Oh my God. Do you know how heavy gold bars oh are? Oh my God. What? 10 pounds? 
those little gold bars would wear weigh at least like twenty five pounds. That's not true. It is those teeny tiny little gold bars, twenty five pounds. Gold is like one of the most dense metals. I'm starting to think you're one of the most dense. Like metals. when you when you see like one of the big bricks, like you know one of those. That you see... I call them dick bricks. In Fort Knox? Yeah, because they look... They're about the size of my dick. Yeah, those are like... Dick brick. Those are like over 50 pounds. Like, if you were gonna pick it up... like How it, would you know? You been to Fort Knox? Hey, man, maybe I have a gold brick. <laughs> maybe you have... No. Uh, uh, oh. No, I mean, I've, I've just heard, like, shows talking about it. Anyway. Really? Let's, so, let's, so let's move on. Yeah, uh, let's move on. Who so, cares about the weight of gold bricks? They didn't uh, show how much effort um, uh, in Itchy and Scratchy Season 3, <laughs> Episode just, 25. He hits the same uh, rib, rib twice in succession. Two and, distinct notes. And it's two complete. I hope, I hope the Clodden who is in charge of that got fired. I have a question, sir. Why would a man whose shirt says genius at work spend all his time watching a child's cartoon? I withdraw my question. <laughs> um, a good drinking game for this film is to take a drink whenever they mention international maritime law. <laughs> I have a better drinking game, and I played it. It was get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I played it during the watching of this movie. It was a, it gave it a five out of ten. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Woo! So yeah, I mean, they over and over again they have to mention and spell it out to the audience that uh, we have rights to this ship because international maritime law says that if you finders keepers, which yeah, is but, pretty pretty great. <laughs> Maritime law seems pretty great. It's exactly finders keepers and no other law. Yeah, it's it's finders keepers. <laughs> Anything goes once you can't see land. So gambling, murder, mm -hmm. you know, it's whatever. Um and then So the ghost boat was perfectly well within its rights to murder all these people. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> this, it's this following international maritime law, people. Ghost boat will not be charged. <laughs> the boat got off on on international maritime law charges. Um so they are getting ready to take all their gold bars back on the tugboat, and then there's a tugboat explosion. Some people die. <laughs> Uh, Greer, who's a played, who's played by Isaiah Washington, survives. Um, his interaction with ghosts is being tempted. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So they're they get a stranded because their tugboat explodes, and so now they're all wandering around the ship. They they need to repair it, and they need to be able to survive on the ship in the meantime. And there's a very very steve 1989 mre info moment okay can you before you jump into this moment can you describe steve 1989 mre to our audience yeah so there's a youtube channel okay called steve 1989 mre info where a guy reviews mres which are meals. like military meals ready to eat that right. they send out in combat missions to where if you can't like have a kitchen you just send them and they can survive for a couple days off of these meals. But these, this man reviews historic Yeah, so MREs. like up to like 200 years old. <laughs> up to 200 year old MREs. And he, and the, the notable thing about him is he seems to try to eat almost everything, everything he opens. Everything he can. And uh, like the, it's impressive when he finds something that he won't. Cause you're like, wow, that must be bad. Cause he, he's opened something from like pre-civil war i think and he's like it just looks like mm. dust like and and he'll i mean maybe i should just, just kind of he lick. has like an existential crisis where he <laughs> looks at it and decides whether his life is worth um youtube entertainment and he almost always chooses the side of entertainment so he takes a little bit and he's like well, okay well that tastes like rust <laughs> <laughs> this okay. tastes like rust dust. So, so anyway, so that's that's his whole thing, and he's got a whole shtick. He's very much like drain addict that he gets what uh, a meme is and how to like create a channel around your own personal memes, right? And uh, there's a moment where they find this can of beans and they open it. These two crew members and they're like, 
hey, that doesn't look too bad. Why don't we why don't we try it out? It's very much what this guy's YouTube channel is about. And it sounds something like this. Let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. Okay, so I want to check out those beans and frankfurters real quick first. Just can't help it. Oh no. Whoa, that did just happen. <laughs> Told you those contents were under pressure. Whoa. Oh, that's smelling pretty foul. Oh, jeez. You know, it got all over the place. Look at that. It's just infested with botulism. <laughs> I would safely assume. And those contents of being under pressure like that, that is not a normal thing. Definitely went bad a good while ago. But I'm going to venture on. It's not really fit for human consumption anymore. I'm sure it was back in the day. Yeah. So, I mean, that, it's shocking that he didn't try it, at least. I mean... That thing exploded. Yeah. Just straight up botulism. Like, no no care whatsoever. And he's like, oh, I hope I didn't get that in my eye. <sighs> Very much drain addict. Just like a... Impressive. Anyways, um... Have you caught the latest a- a episode of Drain Attic? The one where he's he puts all that poop in the rose yes. cone. Yes, oh that's great. Because it's the first oh time. Oh my god! It's, it's impressive the best. because it's the first time that he has had any concern about the fallout of the uh, of the of the stuff coming out of the drain. Right. He's like, all right, well, I'm gonna blow and suck at the same time because he has like a vacuum. Yeah. And he's kind of sucking it up and not being super successful at it, but still sucking in a lot. There's still like probably a five foot radius of just utter diarrhea <laughs> shit <laughs> around, like right, right next to a stairway in this like apartment building or something. Oh man, it's. Uh, let me tell you, if you're new to the show, there's a another YouTube channel we're obsessed with called Drain Addict. Ollie from Australia and Ratty, his little rat, they go around and unclog drains. We need to interview this guy. We got to get him on the show. Head over to Drain Addict. Leave him a comment. That says you need to go on Horror Movie Talk podcast. You can send him a link to our shit. But man, this latest episode was everything I wanted yeah. it to be and more. Is that what I think it is? Have we got corn? It's pretty thick. It's pretty thick. <laughs> so anyways, these guys find like a tin of of uh, <laughs> baked beans and they're like, yeah, that looks pretty good. And they're like having a scene where they're like, woohoo, baked beans. Mm. Having like baked bean fights mm. and like, this is all good mm. fun. Mm. It mm. still mm. tastes great. Yeah, baked bean fight. And then you fight. know <laughs> you know where this is going. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually maggots. Mm. And they, they I would... I was impressed with the practical effects being just real, actual maggots being put into these guys' mouths and then them spitting them out. Yeah, that's it was great. gnarly. It was good. Um, the other haunting is... Uh, that number is 971-772-0743. All right. Uh, the other haunting, Greer, played by Isaiah Washington, he's tempted by that Italian singer ghost, and he's falling around and he's all... Can I see one today? I just want to see one of your titties, girl. <laughs> can you give me? Can you do that? No, can you do it? I don't think I can do it. Oh, that. I think you can. That's do it. really. Do you know who that is? No, that's Jim Carrey. Wow. Yeah. Do it. That was off of an Ooh. SNL skit. <clears throat> no, I can't do that. Come on. I, I I know I can. Like I'm telling you, I just I did it. I just did a did a dead on. Rendition. It was perfect. Can I see one today? I just want to see one of your titties, girl. <laughs> there is a moment when he's following her and she's like taking off her dress and you get to see one titty. One titty. And, like, and he's following her and he's like, yeah, let me see that one titty, girl. Can I see one titty? <laughs> let me see one titty. I can't believe that's Jim Carrey's actual voice. I don't. It is. I don't believe it. No, it doesn't no. sound like the timbre of his voice. It is. Wow. Yeah, it's impressive. Yeah. I was impressed by it. Um so he's following her around, and then eventually he 
follows her when she's like fully naked and falls down an elevator shaft. Yeah. That's one of the deaths. Classic man following a woman falling into an elevator yeah, shaft. Yeah, goes bit. goes give her a back hug to wrap his arms around those titties, those machines, <laughs> and then he falls right through her because she's a ghost. And then I swear to God, he says fuck at the bottom of the elevator once he hits. <laughs> Am I wrong in this? I let, let me let me play this. <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> that's that's very accurate to what i would say yeah um so that happens uh gabriel byrne is in this movie as like the the captain of the of the tugboat yeah who also makes an appearance in hereditary Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's a father and hereditary. Yeah. Much younger in this, but looks exactly the same. Gabriel Byrne is like one of those actors that you're like, man, he must be a really, really great actor. But then when you watch him, it's like, "Eh, it's like his his accent makes him sound a lot better than he actually is. Probably. (laughs) Whoa. That is. I don't know. I can't I can't think of any Gabriel standout Gabriel Byrne performances. Hereditary. Yeah, it was all right. Great. Yeah. All right. Well. Anyways, he goes crazy, and he, he drowns. <laughs> yeah, Lot, lots of people die. Basically, the only one that survives is the is uh, Julianne Margulies, ER girl. Yeah, uh, they they do a you know a decent job of bringing a coherent storyline together in this movie. Like I said yeah. earlier, so this is all yeah, this is all happening, and the ending is where they really tie it all together in a nice knot, and there's a big twist. Yeah. A couple twists, actually. Yeah, twisty twists. Um, so she is shown a vision by the little girl. And it was one titty. One. Let me see one titty. <laughs> um, so they, uh, she, she's get shown, she gets shown what's, what happens. And so it starts with the, um, the wire whipping through the wire whipping through and bifurcating everyone and then it kind of pans inside and it shows like in the kitchen they're poisoning people so a bunch of people are dying from poison and then there's like the crew of waiters that are actually um, the people that are going after the gold and uh, apparently the, the singer um, was fine because she was following them in and they go and they like open the crates with the gold and they're like woo high fives woohoo and then the one guy executes all of them yeah. with his Tommy gun. And so it's straight out of the dark Knight. It's, it's literally the opening scene of the dark Knight with the Joker where they're doing the heist and then everyone murders each other oh, yeah. until the very end. Yeah. And the big reveal is that the final guy that killed everyone, like including the singer at the end, uh, turns around and it's ferryman. So, Fairy man's a ghost. So he is the ghost boat. Yeah, he's a ghost boat. And so she turns on him, and then she blows up the ship, and then, then she gets rescued, and then she, and then the big twist ending that's like very schlocky. He's and I was a like, collector of souls. Oh right, the yeah, way yeah. she is a collector of salvageable materials. Yeah, so they got to get people to board the ship so he can kill them, so he can have their souls, so he can take them to hell, I guess. Take them to the ghost boat. And uh, so then at the end, another schlocky twist is that as she's boarding the ambulance, um, she sees the crew of the tugboat boarding this cruise ship that she just got off of. She's like, no! With with ferrymen, and they're bringing on the gold. Don't go back Which is, like, so dumb. Mm. (laughs) It's, like, so tacked on. It's like, no, we need a boat with gold, so we gotta be ghosts on a ghost boat. Um, So that was kind of ghost boat. Yeah, it was ghost boat. Ghost ship. Ship ghost. Ship based boat. Ghost ships on... Ship ship ghosts on the ghost ship. Water... Waterboard. Oh boy! Final recommendations. Who would like this? Board the. Are you ready to board the ship boat? Ghost. Is this worth like seeking out and paying money for? Because I didn't feel that. But if this was on cable on Sci Fi Channel, I would definitely say you should watch it if you're not doing anything important. Yeah, says the guy who gave it a three. Um, yeah, no, uh, that's an accurate representation. I don't know. I think I think this is worthy of nostalgia for those who watch. Definitely more worthy than wrong turn uh 
And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, no, I, I, w- I would. Uh, you can you can watch the most satisfying part of this movie on YouTube in a minute and a half, uh, which is the opening scene where they all get cut in half by a wire in a very terrifyingly weird, horrible feeling, bad, mm-hmm. bad, good scene. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily pay money for it, even though I did. Uh, so yeah, it's what it is. Mm-hmm. Ghost boat. Can I see one today? Yes, you can. <laughs> so let's go on to taglines. Here's tagline. <laughs> Okay, so taglines is a game where we come up with alternate taglines for the movie we're reviewing. Sometimes better, sometimes not as good. Anyways, whatever. Taglines. So I would like to say that one of the strongest parts of Ghost Boat is the poster. The poster for this movie is great. It's stuck with me for years. I, I never saw this movie until last night, and... But... I could have at any point in the past twenty years told you what the what the the cover for it and the poster for it looked like, which is a the the front of a boat in the dark. It's basically like Titanic with the with a skull, skull on, it. on it. And uh and and the original tagline is C Evil. S E A C Evil. So All like right. a place like the sea, like the mm-hmm, ocean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sea evil. So we can't do worse than that, can we? <laughs> can, can we? All right. Can we? You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Ghost ship. Boats and ghosts. Boats and ghosts. I gotta have me more boats and ghosts. Boats and ghosts. But Bo- Okay. You get it. Okay. That's a little uh, Step Brothers. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Little thing. Yeah, yeah. Ghost ship. The ship that came out of nowhere and cut everyone's expectations in half. Uh, <laughs> Ghost ship. Salvage millions in gold? Eh, we'll get around to it. <laughs> Ghost ship. This boat could have used a lot more booty. Could have. <laughs> oh. More than just one titty. Yeah, closely related. Ghost ship. Can I see one titty? Oh, man, Jim Carrey is a national treasure. He is. He's really wonderful. This is... This may be a little too far. Ghost ship. Like Waterworld, but bad. (laughs) (laughs) Ouch. Cut Uh, ghost ship deep. Ghost ship. Starts out great, then... (laughs) (laughs) All right, so that's taglines... Yeah, uh, what do we got next? So let's get into it. Came from social media. Yes, it came from social media to fill the world with terror, to bring you unforgettable suspense. <laughs> what was it? Where did it come from? Who were the all-powerful creatures it brought from social media? And what did they want on earth? came from social media is just our opportunity to read back some of the comments or questions we have from social media facebook instagram twitter all those good places um just up front want to say we are we are not able to uh, read all the comments that we've had over the last month so if we miss you we're, we apologize trying to hit some of the the big thing the yeah, big conversations we, we are have. just coming off of a about a month-long vacation so yeah. uh, we are sorry for 
I don't know if we're enjoying a little bit of our lives outside of you people, you, you <laughs> blood sucking vampires. Again, that number is nine seven one seven seven two zero seven four three. Um. So first off, on Twitter, I get a message from Drake May sixty. Um. He kind of show. He kind of told us that we were inspiration for him. He says, "My name is Drake. Um, I'm from good old Alabama. Um, for real though, I have." extremely bad social anxiety and i wanted to wanted you guys to know your show has made an intense impression on me and my friends also listen but don't really do social media stuff so much so that you guys have inspired us to do our own horror podcast about my uh, about my friend Uh, he hasn't seen anything but wants to watch horror um and just talks about kind of the history he had with his uncle having a big old library of horror movies and uh they're they're wanting to get their podcast off the ground and we'd encourage anyone that has an inkling of it like go for it yes it's it's pretty awesome um it it is a big commitment it's a lot of work but it is very satisfying not only is it satisfying but it's taught me a lot about about just being or trying to be successful, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just taught me about, you know, get get up and go. It's given me, it's given me good life lessons that I feel I can apply elsewhere in my life in a positive way. So, um, you know, and I like their premise too, you know, they have a friend who's never seen any horror movies and they're going to show them to him. It's a a great premise. I I'd listen. So, um, yeah, it's a great excuse to watch a movie every every week or whatever your schedule is and talk about it you know and you can just say sorry sorry honey it's it's not up to me we gotta watch a horror movie i just like to uh yeah (laughs) that's a good one that's actually a good point um i just like to say some one of the other things he said to us drake may 60 on twitter said long story short my anxiety uh, was causing a lot of blocked drains in my life but you guys have motivated me to become a drain addict so genuinely thank you for this and i will figure out a way to get that apple review your way he uh he doesn't have an apple phone but god damn it he's not gonna let that get in his (laughs) fucking way um another person from twitter that had a pretty long conversation uh, with was at Arcadia Delanoir. Um, she's actually a brand new patron. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining us uh, this week, Cassandra. We appreciate it. And he, and she said, listening to the new episode, just wanted to suggest you use some of David's reaction noises to bring back porn or horror, but using his reactions, um, in this episode, specifically 1833. Yeah. Like, Oh, it's just like mind blowing. It's, it's like, Oh, but, uh, but it is a little slow for me. He, <laughs> oh, it's just mind blowing. Oh, what the oh, fuck? Oh. oh, but it is a little slow for me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would work pretty good. Um, but that would be dishonest using that clip in horror or porno because it's, it's not from a horror or a porno, and we are pretty strict about this, those qualifications. Yeah, you'd um, have to name it something. That like. would be a funny joke, though. Yeah, it would if be we a- just like. Yeah, we were to do something like that. Uh, Joe Grabinski on Twitter revealed something amazing to us. Amazing. Um, He said he he started when I talked to him, he said, I started listening today. He saw a blurb in Rue Morgue and started with the Candyman episode and pressed so far. Um, He leans more towards like the zombie and giallos of uh, the 80s slashers and stuff like that. And he said he's excited to hear more. So I'd never even heard of Rue Morgue before. We're not like super ingrained in all of the horror products it's that are available. not part of our identity. Um, but Rue Morgue is a, a horror magazine, apparently, like, one of the largest... Is it really? ...horror magazines. Uh, Rue, R-U-E, Morgue, as in a morgue. And uh, they had a little blurb about horror movie talk. Yeah, we were, and we were he featured us, as in part of their podcast spotlight. Yeah, in the audio spotlight section, there's, like, a whole, like, eighth of a page review of the show and just said hey check this out we got three and a half stars out of five which Uh, is the same as joe bob briggs first season of uh that's the same score he got yeah which is fucking huge yeah so um it was really cool to see us we got like legit press coverage we had nothing to do with it and we had no idea and it was back in march yeah and good news about that i got four of those Come into my house for for oh really yeah. I bought one too <laughs> did you really yeah. I bought one for you and oh. yeah so no, cool. we should have communicated better on that one yeah Ellis Reed on Twitter uh, goes by 
at LSRE5294205 says, Hi, yeah, I've been listening to the podcast a lot. Some faves, uh, some of his favorite uh, or her favorite. I'm very good at misgendering people, so mm-hmm. who who knows? Ellis could... Zim's favorite. Zim's favorite uh, movies uh, are Hellraiser, The Thing, The Void. I really want to watch The Void. I, I haven't watched it yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Dark Song, which I haven't heard of, and Hell House LLC, which is surprisingly good found right, footage. Right, right. If you have not seen Hell House LLC. He says, uh, or they say, or the Zim says, Weirdly, I love Devil's Doorway, which... Which was, I think, the first episode we ever recorded. Yeah, I think that was episode one of Horror Movie Talk. And uh, and you're right about The Little Stranger, which is like the fifth episode we recorded. I really enjoyed it as a spooky period drama, but it's not horror. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, I mean, he's a long... I mean, he really goes back there. Yeah. Yeah, Devil's Doorway is the first, and I think The Little Stranger might even be... No, I guess it is like the third or fourth. uh, Five, yeah. Because... Yeah, we did like Slender Man or some shit like oh, that. Oh, dude! Now we got now we got Instagram. Who we got first on Instagram, baby? Oh, oh baby! We got Bugsy Siegel. That's right, Bugsy. boy. Do we have a lot to tell you about Bugsy Siegel? Bugsy. So Bugsy, as in B U G Z S I E G E L. He's a he's a rapper. He's a monster truck enthusiast, as far as I can tell. He's yeah. I'm I'm really confused about what his involvement with monster toy, trucks is. A cr- toy creator or acquirer or acquirer, um, but definitely uh, like the main headline is a as a rapper, and he puts and, out but not but not and a horror movie enthusiast ex- in the extreme, and a huge fan of horror movie talk. Like literally every day we get something from Bugsy. At least which, one thing. Which mo- we, mo- usually eight things. Yeah, which we welcome. We love Bugsy, and uh, he show he shares with us his projects and and stuff, and like and uh, uses our clips and photos of him listening to horror movie talk and his stories. Like he's he's a, recording something right now with Bubba Sparks. Yeah, remember Bubba Sparks? <laughs> Do you remember him? Yeah, I remember his name. I kind of remember his music. He's, I, I just don't know how the rap game works. Yeah, it's it's really impressive. Like he's he's got like a, he's collaborated with a lot of people, and so he's he's um he's got his own he's music got, videos. It's, it's hard. You guys got to okay. You got to check out in his Instagram because I can't work out. I can't work Bug, Bugsy out. I can't place him. Yeah, there's some pictures where he's like. Where he's like loving his his grandma, and she's got like a monster truck in her hand, and it's his monster truck with his artwork on it. And then there's other ones where he's got like full blown fucking hookers under each arm. <laughs> and I'm and that's I'm the like, rap game, bro. Is it? Yeah, I guess you love your mom, right? Yeah, you love moms. You love hoes. Sometimes they're the same thing. Sometimes your mom is or uh, a mom. It, all right. Boy, I mean, we don't deep, want to say anything about Bugsy's mom. I'm not saying anything about Bugsy's mom. I love her. I'm Bugsy, saying, if you have I'm something saying, to say to us, 971. <laughs> <laughs> that number is 971-772-0743. I am looking forward to whatever Bugsy has to leave us on that voicemail yeah. line. Uh, yeah. And because I need to know a coherent... <laughs> I need to know what you are and what you ascribe, what you aspire to be. You know, well, I mean, he's definitely aspiring. He's a rapper. Ra- well, he is. Yeah, a he's rapper. a rapper. He is a rapper, he and he's a, a producer, and he has rap videos. Yeah, so he's got a bunch of rap videos. He's on Spotify. Check check out his Instagram. He's got links to his projects. It's Bug Z Siegel, all one word. How do you spell um, that? Siegel. I don't oh no! Uh, There's too many pages. S I E. Uh, Bug, B-U-G-Z-S-I-E-G-E-L. Yeah, check him out. Instagram. Uh, another message on Instagram, dgraph0311 underscore BJJ. This is the one where we need to make an apology. Oh. we Okay, yes. somber, a somber moment. Listen. We, we, we I do feel bad, honestly. Um, um, we're in the shit. We are in the shit. So he messaged us, and um, 
we've disappointed him. He says, I am unfollowing your Instagram and podcast because of the statement made in the spoiler section of It 2. You, refer, you referred to the homos, homophobic scene and th- then implied that all Republicans homophobic and act like these characters. Um, I have gay Republican friends, and we listen to podcasts for entertainment, not for political ideologies to be pushed on us. And so he, he made it a point to just say he's he's unplugging all podcasts or social media that, that mention politics or, or have, like, you know, political ideologies or views, which I totally respect. Like, I don't want anything to do with politics on... No podcasts or entertainment that i listen to i whenever i hear it i roll my eyes and and usually we're pretty good at leaving it out yeah I'm like we're pretty on our hundredth episode i i made a promise to to our listeners that we we would not uh you, you know give any political opinions i can i can play it for you if you like you want me to sure okay here i think uh give me a moment this episode of horror movie talk is brought to you by smart shop smart Shop Smart. And now a word from Horror Movie Talk. Tired of political unrest? Worried about the state of the world? Have the Rona and just need a little pick-me-up before they put you down? Here at Horror Movie Talk, we hear you. The last time we raged against the machine, David shit his pants and Bryce was found in Belize with his kidney removed. For this reason, we will do our best to make HMT a safe space for you. All Horror Movie Talk, all the time. No political opinions, no real-world scenarios. Only the soothing sounds of chainsaw-wielding killers running you down, total body eviscerations, and godless demon sex. Horror movie talk. We promise that you won't learn anything but horror movies. (laughs) So, we didn't keep to that, apparently. Um... Well, this is before that statement was made, but this is... I just wanted to play the... The offending... The offending yeah, statement. Um, statement. As a little setup, if I cut most of it out, um, we're talking about It Chapter 2. Yeah. Um, the opening scene is of a brutal beating of a gay couple. It is and, really uh, uh, off the charts brutal. Yeah, and it's set up in 2016, or it's set in modern times. Yeah, so yeah. It, we're talking about how anachronistic it felt. Yeah. That I don't think that a gay couple would get beat up just because they were gay or displaying intimacy. It doesn't seem that way like that way in America right now, but I right. I could be So anyways, wrong. that was that was kind of the setup to what we were talking about. And uh here's the cl- offending clip. Portraying Derry as super homophobic and still this weird anachronistic community that that hates gays and will beat the shit out of them to basically to death sets it up to where you might not want to be out openly gay and dairy. Yeah. yeah. So that that affects some of the main characters. Yeah. And we'll talk about it that did later. Feel, it did feel a little, uh, I don't know, I guess depending on you, who you are, your experience in America in 2019, maybe this feels dead on the nose for you. But I'm not, I'm not a gay man, so it did feel out of place in my community, uh, which is portland so, yeah, so so maybe we're maybe we're just way too privileged well i don't know here. we're in we're in vancouver so i mean you get out you get like 10 miles out of any major metro area and, and you're gonna changes a lot get some republicans out there but so that was yeah so i mean it was tactless to label that as republicans because we're talking about um homophobic people and and basically saying that um you know, people out in rural, uh, rural area areas are more not, backwards. And not only also, Republican, but 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 un uh, unaccepting of right of anything really. You know, and just, I know it's it's casting a broad net on. Yeah, it was the wrong choice of words, and even yeah, even like saying something like conservative is not necessarily fair either because that has connotations with who you're talking about, but. Really, um, you know, the old-fashioned views of homosexuality homosexuality is very wrong. Um, I don't think it's crazy to, to point out that it's a much bigger problem in rural communities than it is in urban Stop areas. Stop defending yourself. 
I'm, but I genuinely, genuinely am sorry when I, if I, you know, uh, you know, if I, if I bothered people with invoking politics and that's not what I meant to do. So sorry, D graph. I hope, hope you come back. Well, um, not only, not only sorry, but thank you. Like once yeah. I, once I, I, I started, a, you know, basically apologizing and saying like, Hey, we're kind of gay anyway. So it's not like, right. you know, this kind of comes from a place of who cares. He was really cool about yeah. like, he was super, like, he wasn't like, fuck you. It was kind of more like, Hey guys, thanks for, you know, thanks for, Thanks for doing what you do. I just, I just can't deal with it in my life right yeah. now. So I'll probably be back. And and uh, we hope you, we hope you do come back. Yeah, and like I said, I totally understand. Like I respect anyone for saying like I want to unplug from all this shit show. Yeah, know? same here. Yeah, it's 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 exhausting. And I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Um, another actual couple from Instagram contacted us. There's a savvy underscore aura underscore o and michael 5754 they're actually oh, right. a, a young couple dating and they bond over listening to horror movie talk Aww. uh savvy said your guys's podcast is so funny my boyfriend and i always listen to you guys when we're in the car together and we laugh our asses off uh but you guys should definitely do a review on split it's a good one talking about m night Shyamalan's split and then Michael, the, yeah, she had a, she watched a ton of movies. She was kept asking me, "Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this?" I was like, "Jesus, yeah. I haven't seen a lot of this." Uh, Michael said, "If y'all have time in your next podcast episode, it'd be awesome if you talked about your top three or five horror movies, um, and also Tales from the Crypt would be cool if you reviewed it. Um, if you run out of ideas for reviews, um, so just for people that are new or people that don't know, we do have a episode that's our top fives." Um, called the horrific origins of yeah. horror movie talk or something. Yeah, the horrific beginning of the horror movie <laughs> yeah. talk, something like that. It's around episode ten to twenty, so, somewhere in there. Yeah, and that's like kind of our intro episode of who we are and what our taste is. Yeah. Um, so if you go on horror movie talk and and do a search in the episodes section, horrormovietalk dot com, horrormovietalk dot com, um, you can find that. Um. And yeah, we're we're up for any suggestions for movies. We've got like a giant list of movies that people suggest to us, and you know we have patrons that uh, vote for it. So we want to watch all of them, but you know we have a limit when we only do one per episode. And we're gonna get started up on new releases soon yeah. too. So we're gonna have even less time on Facebook. Gabriel, uh, who is a, a patron, uh, asked what our favorite horror movie posters slash trailers were and i immediately answered with deathbed the bed that eats people <laughs> because that's the that's the funniest one i can think of uh it's it's inexplicable it's as it's as fucking weird as you can as it sounds it's mm -hmm. a bed that eats people it's a deathbed yeah i think um iconic posters i mean it's cliche but i mean the thing is fantastic okay. Um, the blob jaws is great jaws is great yeah jaws is so good that it inspired other copycats like right. tremors yeah um trailers I, I can't think of a specific trailer i mean not really a alien horror, not really a horror movie but the one movie that i point to as the greatest trailer or dr greatest example of a trailer um <clears throat> alien was the original jurassic park like yeah. teaser what which was it? it shows nothing like before the movie came out the trailers that they showed showed absolutely nothing it showed a bigfoot well actually it showed like the vibrations from the t-rex stomping yeah. in the glass and then it showed a bigfoot imprinting in the ground and that's it and yeah, you're like good. i'm on board i want to know what's happening Let's do this. I remember the less the, you show in a trailer, the better, especially for horror movies. The fever pitch surrounding that that movie upon its relief release was huge. <clears throat> it was it was a big deal. Yeah, uh, Jason, another um, one of our favorite people. Um, he was talking to us about Red Dragon and Manhunter, um, and this was kind of a conversation because he talked about it. And he was, he was saying, basically, they're the exact same movie. And David, you had, like, um, you took issue with it. No. You took, yeah, you took issue with that, and you said, no, they're completely different. Like, if you watch them back-to-back, -back, they're completely different movies. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, it's been so long since I've seen Red Dragon <laughs> that I can't remember what Red Dragon's actually like, but I don't remember it being like Manhunter at all. I remember, <laughs> man, I remember watching Manhunter like two or three years ago and going, oh my God, not knowing what it was. Yeah. Just, just upon being, like, oh, this looks like something to watch. And then being like, oh, this is fucking Silence of the Lambs straight up. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's from, I mean, Hannibal Lecter's in it. It's like the original book it was was Red Dragon. Mm-hmm. It was like the first in the series of books that involved Hannibal Lecter. Um, but even Jason pointed out, like, well, it's got a serial killer that has a dragon tattoo on the on his back and is obsessed see, I, with women I, I in a very particular remember. way. And I can't remember. He's hunted I down by this is, by the same character. I wish in both well. movies and and. Uh, <laughs> So later he talked to me and he's like, so David's completely wrong about that, right? And I was like, yeah, he's, it's the same movie. No, it's not. It's, the, it's, it's based off of the same book. It'd be nice if both of you weren't trying to <coughs> gaslight me. Right. I mean, I just feel like, I just feel like it's, it's going very, to it's extreme very much like, efforts to make me think I'm crazy. It's a different movie in the sense that it's different feel and different director and like intention, but the plot is very much the same. Um, that's that's what you sound like. And then G- Jason also he regularly shows us enticing pictures of his huge swath of barbecued meats and his his smoker, and he makes us so jealous. And I wish he lived in Vancouver. I can't talk about this right now. I'm, I, I would kill for a fucking fatty brisket my like just just like pure fat oh my god i would right now i would i'm so low energy right now i feel like i'm gonna die yeah i'm pretty angry too if i don't get some brisket we gotta do a fast after pod where we catch up with everything (laughs) it's not gonna be fast and we're gonna start feeling better about halfway through it yep um so thanks for everyone reaching out to us on social media sorry if we didn't get to you but um if you want to talk to us um leave us a voicemail at 971-772-0743 that's 971-SPA-0743 and just continue talking to us on social media too so thank you so much for listening thanks again to our new patrons Frankie V, Ellis, Bradley B, Cody B, Matthew S, Brian W, and Cassandra B, and viewers like you. We fucking love you guys for supporting the show. Like, I'll do anything. And we're talking about adding... I'm I'm like, I mean, really considering adding uh, more perks to patron. I mean, there's probably a level where we would fly to your house and suck your dick. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, it's the fly to your house and suck your dick tier. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, 50 bucks. Yeah, at <laughs> least 50 bucks. Are you kidding me? Probably more like 60. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, 55. Um, so, thanks to you for listening. Please share the podcast with a friend if you like it. Um, again, we're trying to get up to 200 ratings on Apple Podcasts. So, if you have an Apple product or know someone who does, leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate it. Check out our, our website to links to other ways you can support us, including um, Amazon, buying stuff on Amazon, um, our shop. Um, special thanks to you. Um, yeah, go ahead. Please purchase some stickers if you haven't already. That yeah. will help us get you more cool things. Yeah, and we're planning on having T-shirts any minute now. Um, any old so, time. So Anytime. stay tuned. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. We love you. Bye. Bye. I just want to see one of your titties, girl.